everyone, I'm Larissa Russell of Creative You, and I'm your host of the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Here's where we talk about the connection between creativity and healing by interviewing amazing creatives, spectacular healers, and inspiring people who have used creativity in their healing. What does it mean to be creative? What is creativity? You don't have to write a best-selling book or paint a masterpiece or even play in a rock band. Creativity is in everything that we do, in the ways we think, in the way we run a business, in our everyday lives, we are creative all the time. Let's talk about how we are creative and how creativity helps us heal mentally, physically, and emotionally, right now on the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Okay, so I lost the unicorn horn. So we are back again. So last week I did the 50 questions to ask yourself for personal growth. I found this from Maddie Blank of Michigan State University and I didn't um, prepare any answers. I'm just winging it. I took a cursory look at the questions just to make sure, you know, I wasn't gonna offend anybody. My answers might offend people, but oh well. Um, So yes, 50 questions for one podcast might've been too long. So I have cut it into two. And here we are again. Okay, so we did the first 25. So now number 26. If you could live anywhere, where would it be and why? Honestly, Spain. I love Spain. I actually was packed and ready to move. And then both my daughters got pregnant at the same time. So I didn't. I would love to still move to Spain. I love Spain. Um, But more than likely, we're going to end up on Vancouver Island. That's sort of our um, retirement plan. Okay, not my retirement plan, but my partner's. She's a little more fearful than I am. I like to like just do it. She is not really that open to that. So happy medium. We're probably moving to Vancouver Island. So but if I could live anywhere, it would be Spain, um, even though I don't speak Spanish and I'd have to learn. Uh, number 27, what is something that you would make a scene in public about? Oh, people who belittle others, people who are rude, um, anybody calling out LGBT plus community or um, people of color, anything like that, I will make a scene. I. I have been known to make a scene. Yeah, just try it. Yeah, Um, I will stand up and um, call you out. Just putting that out there. That's what I would make a scene in public about. Okay, 28, what are you most afraid to lose? Um, I feel like that one of these, there was the question similar to this in the first 25. Um, What am I most afraid to lose? I don't know because everything makes you who you are. Change is good. I would say I have such a deep connection with my partner that I've never experienced in my life. I would, you know, that would be heartbreaking. Even though I have gone through a death of a spouse, I feel like this would be not more heartbreaking, but different, different. Um, What am I afraid to lose? I think my kids, like if one of my kids was to die, yeah, that would, that would probably be really, yeah, your kids are your everything, even though they don't think so, they really are, they really are. 29, what are you most insecure about? Oh, I feel like this is a long list. (laughs) One of the questions that I ask typically on my podcast is about uh, imposter syndrome. And I think as women, we all have that. So what am I most insecure about? Um, Over the years, it's been my looks because my brother is a dancer and a model. So that's always been sort of a comparison thing that I've had. Um, Although I think I've kind of grown into my looks, yeah, whatever. I'm also old, so I get away with a lot more. I don't have to be. Um, you know, body image still, 
I mean, I have no real complaints other than pain, which I don't think would be any different regardless of my size. It's just the trauma that my body's been through. So most insecure about, sometimes I get insecure about the way I draw, but honestly, that's a skill I've only just recently picked up. Even though I've been an artist for years, I've been mostly an abstract artist. So drawing is a new skill for me. I don't know. I like to overcome insecurities. So, and really put myself out there. So yeah, I mean, everything at the beginning, but then you just, you know, do it. I mean, even video. So you may be listening to this podcast on um, one of the podcast stations, or you might be watching it on YouTube. When I first started my business, I had to go through um, rapid transformational hypnosis therapy to be able to video myself. I was so traumatized by photos and video. Uh, and again, because my brother was a dancer and a model, beautiful, and everybody talked about him. Um, and then, of course, we didn't get family portraits. We would take them, and then we wouldn't purchase them because I wasn't photogenic. Um, that happened on two occasions that I can remember. And like that really stuck with me, right? And it's like, yeah, it really stuck with me. So, you know, ever there's been things that I've been insecure about and then I get over it. There's things, you know, like you're insecure until you try it, but then you try it and it's not so bad. So, yeah, there's nothing that really sticks out, but there's lots of things that have been over time. Yeah. Okay, 30. What chance of fate changed your life forever? Oh, I mean, there's so many. Um, meeting people, like my partner, uh, that was a total fluke. Um, everything in your life is a chance of fate, right? Because if you turn right or you turn left, something else happens. If you make this decision or that decision, something else happens. So everything has brought me to this point now where I'm really settled into my life again not the perfect I keep working on myself I think you have to um but really it is who I am because of the decisions I've made so yeah every chance of fate every decision I made has changed my life forever 31 what is something you regret doing I feel like we're repeating some of these questions from the earlier 25 all right. So regret doing, like I said, in the last episode, I regret moving to small town, Alberta, with my daughter going into high school. I think that was the biggest mistake I ever could have made. She may disagree because she still lives there. But I think it changed both of us. And yeah, I don't think it was the best decision. But other than that, I don't regret a lot because I, everything I've done has made me who I am. And I, I'm pretty okay with myself. Yeah, I like me. Uh, 32, what is the best and worst thing about getting older? Oh, I would say the best thing about getting older is I just don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't. You don't like me? I'm fine with that. Um, you know, not everybody's going to like me and really feeling into that and not worrying about what everybody thinks. I was totally raised with worrying about what everybody thinks and what would the neighbors think and what, you know, what would your grandmother think and what would your, you know, all of that, what would your father think? I don't care anymore. I don't care. Um, does that mean I'm a horrible, mean person? No, I, I consider myself quite loving, kind. Um, I don't know, the people who like me really like me, so <laughs> can't be that bad. Um, so I would think, I think that's the best is growing up and growing into my most authentic self and not worrying about what other people think. What's the worst thing about getting older would be my body is just falling apart. And I don't know that it's, 
it would be at the state it's in now if my body hadn't been through so much trauma when I was younger. Um, so it is something I'm working on. Um, but the amount of pain that I, I live with every day is really exhausting. Um, but I keep working on it. So that's one of the worst things about getting older. 33, what part of your life do you miss the most? Oh my God, not teenage years. That was the worst time ever. Um, what part of your life do you miss the most? I don't think there is a part that I miss. Because every year, um, okay, so childhood was okay-ish, or I just didn't know that it wasn't okay. Teenage years were a gong show. They were, they were awful. Um, I was just in so much trauma. I was living on the streets. I was going through stuff with my family. Um, I was drinking and um, never really got into drugs much, but, you know, I did a lot of drinking. Um, life was just a mess back then. Uh, in my 20s, I was raising kids. I was exhausted, but I, you know, I thought I was okay. 30s, I was so excited because I finally felt like an adult. I was like, oh, I'm finally an adult. Took me to my 30th birthday. 40s, it was like, oh, okay, I'm kind of moving into my own life here. Uh, 50s have been amazing. So, um, yeah, what part of your life do you miss the most? I don't. I mean, that's what life is about. Life is about change and growing and learning and experiencing. And I keep doing that. So I don't really miss a period of my life. Uh, maybe when my body was a, a lot thinner <laughs> and I thought I was fat. Yeah, little did I know. Okay. Um, 34, if you could go back and fix a relationship with someone, who would it be and why? Um, I'd have to say my daughter, although in hindsight, I have two daughters. Um, I don't know how to fix it because I'm a talker. She's not a talker. I'm a, let's delve into what the issues are. She does not want to do that. I'm a, let's explore, you know, how we can do this. No. So I would have to say that if there was a way to fix that relationship, I, I, I truly don't know without giving up all of myself. And I didn't, don't even know if that would do it. But that would be the one. It's the one that hurts me the most. It hurts me the most. Yeah. I cry a lot about that one. But as adults, they have to make their own choices. And so you just have to respect that. Yeah. 35, what's the hardest lesson you have learned? I'm not always right. <laughs> um, the way my brain works, I just get an idea in it and it's the only, you know, but I, so it sometimes takes me a while to explore that that's not necessarily the way things are, but I am open to that exploration. The hardest thing I've had to learn is that relationships are difficult and they take a lot of work. And if both people aren't willing to do that, you can't do it by yourself. So that I think has been the hardest thing to learn. Um, I had a really tumultuous relationship with my mother. Most people would think we were really close, um, but we struggled, we struggled a lot. And then of course she was gone. Um, by the time I figured it out, I figured out sort of what, um, what could be different. Um, I have a lot of tumultuous family relationships um, because of the mental health issues in our family. But I would say, like learning how hard relationships are, and not that they're not worth it, they're absolutely worth it, but you need both people to work at them. This relationship I'm in with my partner is probably the easiest and the hardest because we work on our relationship all the time, all the time. Uh, we don't let anything go. We question. We, you know, give space, but we also need to talk. And so, yeah, it takes work. It takes work. Um, 
36. What do you do to feel alive? I think for me, swimming in the ocean is so incredibly freeing because my body doesn't hurt. I love swimming. I feel like water just brings ideas and washes away just everything. So to feel alive, swimming, but especially swimming in the ocean. Oh, that's why I need to live near the ocean not in landlocked Alberta, <laughs> where I've lived most of my life. I keep trying to move and I keep coming back. Um, all right, 37, what's the most exhilarating thing you have done? Oh, most exhilarating. Oh, I, I'm not a bungee jumper. I'm not, uh, although I do think I wanna um, jump out of a plane. What do you call that? Parachute, parachute? Yeah, I think I'd like to try that because it terrifies me. I'm so afraid of falling. So I think I want to try it. Um, but as my body starts to break down more and more, I feel like I'm running out of time to do that. So, um, but that's still on my list. That's on my bucket list. I don't know if it's something that you do at 80, but you know, that might be when it gets done. Um, what's the most exhilarating thing you have done? Four by fouring on the North Shore of Aruba on Christmas Day. That was so much fun. We met a couple on our cruise ship. We rented a four by four together. We took turns driving and we laughed and laughed and screamed and had so much fun. That was a great day. That really was a great day. Um, and then we ended it by swimming in the ocean. Yeah, that would be way up there. Yeah. 38, what inspires you? People, people really inspire me. You know, we think people are inherently bad and they're not, they're inherently good. And everybody's trying and just watching other people achieve their dreams or even just working towards their dreams. That inspires me so much, so much. Um, 39. What do you believe is a good life? Oh, this is a good question. What is a good life? And it's different for everyone. For me, I think doing something you love for a living, having enough money to not stress, being able to travel, being able to swim in the ocean, um, and having good people. I think those are really important to make it a good life. And for the most part, I have that. You know, for the most part. 40, what do you take for granted? Oh, this is a good question because we take so much for granted, don't we? And we don't even realize what we take for granted. I think, you know, just our day-to-day -day life and the privilege we have, um, as well, especially Canadians, but white Canadians, um, you know, it, it's really, yeah, we just take that for granted and we, we don't realize what other people don't have because we have it. So that sort of white privilege, I definitely take for granted, although I have been trying to pay way more attention to it, use it for good. Um, and they just start day to day, you know, I take it for granted that I turn on the tap, there's going to be water, clean water that I can drink. Um, I take it for granted that I open the fridge and there's going to be food in it. I take it for granted that my power will be on, um, and that I have a warm place to live and sleep at night. I take all of that for granted. And when you see people who don't have those things, it's a real eye opener. So really paying attention to those things that you take for granted, I think is important. Yeah. So 41, what risks do you believe are worth taking? Oh, anything that doesn't threaten your life, do it. And really even bungee jumping doesn't threaten your life. You might be fearful, um, but are you gonna die? Probably not because they're gonna get sued if you do. So, you know, would I jump in front of a car? No, because that's probably going to take my life. And I don't think it would be fun. Um, 
but writing a book, you know, starting a course, going online, making a video, um, drawing, all those things that we're so fearful of, they're not, they're not going, you're not going to die from it, right? So those are risks worth taking. Try it, see what happens. I'm always trying new things. 42, what was the hardest loss you have ever experienced? Huh, I would say in hindsight, my mother. At the time, I didn't realize it because she'd been sick for so long. I was so tired. She was so tired. Um, I was married with small children and I was in school and I was working full time and I was at the hospital all the time. So I was just grateful for both of us because um, she was no longer in pain and she could breathe again. And so I didn't recognize how much that would impact my life. I think that was, yeah, uh, I would say that was the hardest loss, but I didn't know it at the time. 43, was there ever a point where you felt like giving up but didn't? Absolutely. Um, I've had some serious bouts of depression, and one I talk about quite regularly is one that happened a few years back, where I was on the brink of suicide and was hospitalized and not helped by our medical system. I was hospitalized for a few short 12 hours and then released in the middle of the night to walk home. Um, and if I hadn't been so exhausted, I would have done it that night. Um, the next morning, I made a choice. I couldn't rely on our medical system. I couldn't rely on others. I needed to do something for myself. And that's when I got back into my creativity. That's when I started journaling. That's when I started painting again. That's when I started to heal myself. And from there has brought me to where I am today to help others heal themselves. So yes, I've absolutely been there. I've absolutely been there. And it's it's an exhausting place to be. Um, I've also lost people to suicide and you understand how devastating that is to other people. But when you are in that place, you're not rational, you're not thinking straight. Um, yeah, you just are so tired, so tired. So, but I'm still here and now able to help people based on what I did for myself. So. I, I consider that a blessing. 44, what are some events in your life that made you who you are? Oh, we've talked about this. Literally everything that happens in your life makes you who you are. I've had some horrible things, living on the streets, um, drinking and, um, you know, sex for money and, um, you know, rape and gun to my head and um I've been beaten I've been you know like there's just so many things that have happened to me um I've uh, had a death of a partner a death of my mother I have um two fathers who don't speak to me I have um you know other family relation issues I have a daughter that doesn't speak to me so there's been so many things and all of these events make me who I am. There's also been lots of positives, the birth of my children, um, weddings, um, you know, starting my business, uh, doing good work, um, charity work that I do. Like there's so many positives too, but all of it makes you who you are. So, you know, I don't think there's any one event that makes you who you are. Everything does. 45, what is your favorite season and why? I would have to say fall because here in Canada, we have distinct seasons, especially here in Alberta. Um, our winters can be bitterly cold, like minus 40 bitterly cold. Our summers can be super hot, like plus 40 super hot. Um, typically they're not, we have those highs and lows. Um, spring? It can be really nice, but rainy, and it's always so dirty, it's so dirty. 
as things are starting to bloom, but there's so much garbage left from winter and there's dirt that they, you know, from the road sandings and it's just messy. But fall is that crisp air, sunshine, colors, love fall. Yeah, that's my favorite time. If we could pinpoint <laughs> a day in fall to get married, I would have got married in, fa in fall instead of, well, we were supposed to get married in December. We're getting married next December, cross our fingers. Um, but you can't because we can literally have this beautiful fall day and the next day the trees are bare because we had a wind. <laughs> so we cannot do that. So, um, but fall is my favorite. 46, what do you spend most time thinking about? Um, I would say working on myself. I spend a lot of time thinking about how I can do things better, a lot of time how I can do things for other people better, how I can help people, um, how what's worked for me, what I need to do more of for myself, what I can help other people with, you know, so that whole self-help help kind of thing. I think a lot about that. 47, where would you spend all of your time if you could? Close to my grandkids. Well, except for I really don't want to live in a small town. So I wish they were closer, um, but near the ocean, ultimately near the ocean, because I want to be able to put my toes in the ocean or swim every single day. That would be amazing. 48, what qualities do you admire about others? What's really important to me, honesty and integrity, super important um, in myself and others. And I need people to not necessarily agree with me, but to question, maybe play devil's advocate, um, get me to look at things in a different way. That's really important to me. I really admire that in the friends that I have. They don't just go, oh yeah, okay. They're like, why do you think that way? What, what would happen if you thought this way? What would, and I really appreciate that, yeah. 49. What was your closest call? Closest, close. What was your closest, close call? I would say almost dying from depression. That one was really close. Um, really scary. And, but also the biggest change in my life came from that, I think. Personal change from that. And number 50. We made it to the end of the list. It only took two episodes. So if you die today, how would you want to be remembered? I think I'd want to be remembered as a kind person, a helpful person, a strong person, and someone who followed their dreams. Yeah, inspiring. I think, and not, um, not that I strive to inspire people, but I hope that what I do inspires others. Maybe I do strive for that um, because I do always keep going for my dreams. I keep going for my dreams. So hopefully that inspires others. Yeah. All right. So hopefully you enjoyed getting to know me a little better. Um, I found that a lot of fun and made me think, and I might do some journaling on more of these. I will, of course, add these um, in the listing, in the show notes, uh, so that you have all the questions so you can do them yourself. And, and see what your thoughts are. So thank you again for being here. And so we will see you again next week. And in the meantime, have amazingly creative days. Bye for now. Do you know about the courses and programs that we offer at Creative View? Meditation and journaling in our Morning Calm program. Step into Your Authentic Self is a program to help you heal from past traumas and start believing in yourself so you can be your healthiest, happiest you. We even have a Healing with Creativity monthly membership where you get healing projects twice a month, plus so much more. Keep watch as we're always adding more classes and programs. Plus, we offer free challenges, access to summits and retreats, as we love sharing. Click below to see what we have happening now.